day to begin reopening on May 15th. Eagle News correspondent Joanne Soriano in New York has the details. Thank you, Ken. May 15th is the end of the statewide closure. The question now shifts more towards localities and regions across the states to make sure they are in a position to open, and this is called the New York Forward Reopening Plan. In summary, New York is divided into 10 regions, and in order to reopen, a region must meet seven metrics, which are, one, a decline in total hospitaliz hospitalizations, two, decline in deaths, three, new hospitalizations, four, hospital bed capacity, five, ICU bed capacity, six, diagnostic testing capacity, and seven, contact tracing capacity. Three regions so far, the Finger Lakes, Southern Tier, and Mohawk Valley regions have met all seven metrics required to begin phase one of the reopening plan when New York State on pause expires. If the trend continues, starting on May 15th, these three regions can begin opening businesses for phase one, which includes construction, manufacturing, and wholesale supply chain, retail for curbside pickup and drop-off or in-store pickup, and agriculture, forestry, and fishing. Two more regions have met six of the seven metrics and could be open at the end of the week. New York City has only met four of the seven metrics and is expected to be the last part of New York to open. Governor Cuomo said, as we approach May 15, we have put regional control rooms in place, which are made up of the top government officials and academic and healthcare professionals in that region to watch the situation in which we can develop and increase or decrease the activity and speed of reopening based on metrics and guidelines. These control rooms are critical because we just made it over the mountain and nobody wants to go back to the other side now." End quote. Certain low businesses and recreational activities will be ready to reopen statewide on May 15th, including landscaping and gardening businesses and recreational activities such as tennis and drive-in movie theaters. For today's numbers, in New York, over 1.2 million people have now been tested for COVID-19, more per capita than any state or country in the globe. Yesterday, 21,000 people were tested and 1,600 were confirmed positive. Overall, 337,000 people have tested positive and there have been over 21,000 deaths so far. The governor announced that Northwell Health System discharged at one of their 10,000th COVID patients. Hospital worker from Queens, which was the epicenter in New York at one point, also shared a story with me. He said that whenever a COVID patient is discharged, everyone gets a notification on their phone. It plays, here comes the sun, and it alerts employees of the discharge coming from upstairs. And when they get this alert, they all line up in the lobby to cheer and clap when the patient arrives and is there to exit the hospital. So I know we all like to hear good stories like that. In New York... Joanne Soriano, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you, Ken. I, I think that's extremely cool that uh, they do the ringtone. Um, you know, I, I, I would love to have that on my ringtone just, just to, you know, be in celebration with them too. Uh, Joanne, so now that some parts of the New York of New York are actually reopening, how New York has been dealing with two months of stay at home? I think. That's a good idea about the ringtone. I think I might copy you in and do that, <laughs> at least during this period. Um, as for your question, actually a, a, a good portion of New Yorkers are not even here in the city. They've gone to their other homes or to other family members' homes just to get away from the density of people and not be cooped up in their apartments. Um, for example, in my building, we have to wait for elevators because they'll only allow one person at a time or family unit at a time. So you either have to wait um, and wait for the next one and, and line up if there's a crowd. But it hasn't been too busy here, in, at least in, in my building. And more and more people are actually looking to move out of the city. The experience has showed them that they need more space, fresh air, and many jobs have given them the ability to work from home. Um, I think a lot of employers because they were forced to do this, they realized that it actually does work. I can see telecommuting becoming um, a very big thing coming up in, in the future. And as for me, now that drive-in theaters will be opening, I'm going to look for one. I've never been to one before, and I, I really want to track it out. Yeah, they're actually amazing. Um, you know, back then when I was a kid, and um, they would give you this, like, radio thing that you would put in your car uh, so that you'd be able to access the you know the, the over the radio uh, channel in which you would be able to watch and like listen at the same time it's very cool especially if, you know if you have like a, a pickup truck 
uh, so that you can watch with the stars up. But I mean, I, I don't know over there in New York, it's either too hot or too cold, right? So, yeah. um, and then I'm guessing actually. everyone, yeah, and everyone has the same idea. So it's probably going to be like right next to each other because of the lack of space, unless you leave like the heart of New York and go to like Buffalo or something. I think that's where they'll have to be. We don't have space for a drive in here in New York itself. It'll have to be yeah, further or, out. So I'll make the drive. Yeah, or they could just like, it'll be so unpacked over in the heart of New York that you could probably just put up like a, like a big screen on the, on the, um, on the walls and then like a watch from a bar, you know? I've, I've seen that in summer. People put them on the side of the buildings and it's really cool. Well, hoping for the best for New York. Thank you so much for the update, Joanne. Take care. Thanks, Ken.